Sie hören die Sendung Wellenlänge. Vous écoutez la transmission Longueur d'onde. Udite la transmissione Lunghezza d'onde. You are hearing the transmission called Wavelength. <coughs> Good afternoon, you're listening to Wavelength on Resonance 104.4 FM. Uh, today's programme features music by the Icelandic artist Dieter Rote, uh, spelt D-I-E-T-E-R-R-O-T-H, uh, or sometimes spelt Dieter Rote, uh, D-I-T-E-R-R-O-T, just to confuse matters. Uh, probably best known as a book artist, Rote produced more than 200 titles and editions starting in the early 1950s, uh, some of which were collages of pages cut out of Icelandic daily papers uh, and others by, uh, were the pages cut from the Daily Mail, amongst other things. Uh, later books included works by Gunter Grass, Alfred Anders Hegel and Der Spiegel, uh, which were soaked... Uh, and then seasoned and stuffed into sausage skins. Um, from the mid-1960s, Rote would alter books which annoyed him with deletions and notes in the margin. Most of today's tracks come from a CD which comes with the book Dieter Rote Books and Multiples, a catalogue resume published by hans Jörg Meyer. And within this hefty tome is a small section called Dieter wrote and music with illustrations of the various records and cassettes he produced, uh, including one entitled Barks from Cadax or Cadaques uh, in Spain. Uh, I once owned an original copy of this, which I naively sold to a book dealer for £35 uh, and which then appeared later in his catalogue for £750. Uh, this comprised two stereo vinyl singles in a gatefold cover. Uh, edition of 500 and was a collaboration with the artist Richard Hamilton, published in 1976, uh, and a dog, um, which was persuaded reluctantly at first to bark along as Dieter Oak plucked a guitar. Uh, I'm not sure what Richard Hamilton's contribution was, uh, but they had a shared interest in dogs and art as they also collaborated on an exhibition at the ICA where paintings were hung lower down the walls at what was supposedly dog level. The idea being that dog owners would walk around the gallery looking at pictures accompanied by their pets who would also have something to look at. Uh, I seem to remember that some of the images were of sausages. Anyway, having lost the original singles to, this, uh, to the nameless book dealer... Uh, I was pleased to rediscover the Barking Dog tracks on the CD accompanying the book, published by Hans-Jörg Meyer. And here it is. Uh, this is Dogs... or Actually, I can't remember the name of the track. Bar dogs... something from Kadax. Anyway, Kadax is. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, well, the, the strict title of that is Cancion du Kadak, or Barks from Kadakes, or Hunda Leader, Dog Leader, uh, by Chispas Luis, Richard Hamilton, and Dieter Roth, uh, issued as two singles in 1976, um, limited edition of 500 copies. Uh, of which there were 60 deluxe with a certificate signed by the three artists. Um, yeah, three artists. No mention of the dog. Um, OK. Um, so, in the spirit of um, Dieter Roth, uh we'll go into a sort of free-form reading of extracts from the book uh, over various overlaid tracks from... Uh, rarely heard music by rote, uh, one of which is playing at the moment. <laughs> das, was Sie sagen? Hört man auch das, was Sie sagen? Wird das aufgenommen? Ja? Dankeschön. Das nehmen Sie auf, ne? Uh, DR. Dieter wrote, as a professional or serious musician might put it, was a dilettante. Uh, but uh, DR was a dilettante who also had something to say to the musicians on the subject of music and non-music, not yet music, no longer music, of the and between music and non-music, not yet music, and so on, uh, from which the musicians could also learn to seek, to find, to speak musically about seeking and finding, making something from nothing, making something into something else, or to speak with Schoenberg, uh, to view the world in such a way that everything one looks at becomes the exceptional case through the very way that one looks at it. In his latter years, however, he didn't want to or couldn't listen to music anymore. Uh, previously, D.R. had listened to music with a passion, since we knew each other since 1976, uh, it's not me, that's the writer of this essay, who is Friedhelm Dürl. Um, and every time he visited us, he always wanted me to play him something on the piano, preferably Schubert and Haydn. And then he would draw his drawing to the music drawings. Dieter Roth not only made music alone and with others, he also encouraged others to make music. Uh, he managed concerts and produced records by Hermann Nitsch, for example, or his son Björn and friends. And one occasion by me, that's the author again, a record, Black and White Improvisation for Dieter Roth and E and H in Basel, around midnight, played and recorded after a bottle of black and white, uh, whiskey, presumably, uh, the theme was set, as it were. In 1980, DR sponsored a concert at the Music Academy in Basel by an Icelandic symphony orchestra. A 
bottle of whiskey as your fee. Why not? Later, at a reception given by one of the finer Basel families, DR came up to me and said, You don't believe that I can play the piano? Of course I do. I'll prove it to you. Where there's a piano here in the cellar, a piano with a Linzer Torta resting on top, waiting to be served as dessert. DR played, formed, developed on the keys, later accompanied by his voice, the story of a pig. It was deeply moving. He played and sang in his special way, unabatingly and inexhaustibly. In one of his typical snap decisions, Rote had bought a multi-track tape recorder the day before, which allowed us, without any additional apparatus, to play recordings backwards, mix them to change the speed and distort them, or to raise or lower the pitch by an octave. The machine could even produce a shatter effect. We also had a number of instruments at our disposal, including piano, the sound of switching on devices and other technical blemishes were accepted for the sake of authenticity and included as specific sound events. Nor was it necessary for us to play the instruments with any sort of professionalism. We played or articulated in much the way one would scribble with a crayon, following each momentary impulse motorically, adding according to our inner urges, then responding once again to each other. Nothing was improved or glossed over. Unvarnished moods, atmospheres, inspiration, emotions were allowed to express themselves and be documented as the whole truth. Everyone produced different acoustic moods all at the same time, such that when one of us was fully engrossed in his music making, the next might be letting rip and the third playing the fool, griping or laughing. The result was an intricate web of layers of a kind rarely achieved by free improvisation groups when they are closely attuned to each other and share a particular style. So, lack of a style as a principle of direct expression, accompanied by the free and easy use of musical citations and different modes of playing or music about music. In keeping with this, the production ended with a panoply of finely intoned paraphrases of a line from Eichendorf. It was as if the sky had silently kissed the earth, which in turn summoned up images of one of Schumann's most famous art songs.
Ha <laughs> ha 